Folks, if you're visiting us down here for the first time, if you're curious about all the terrace hills, those are the copper mines. It has nothing to do with us. It's not the dirt from this place. That mine was eight miles away back in 1962 when this was built. There was no town back then either, not a single house. This was the middle of nowhere. The Air Force didn't build these near people. No one in their right mind would build a house next to it. Soviets had a giant nuclear weapon aimed at this very spot. A year after the silo went in, the town popped up. People didn't know what these were. Half the people down here still don't. Showed up when we were operational, the building wouldn't have been here. None of this equipment would have been up here. You drove up, all you would have seen was the fence, the antenna out front, a couple telephone poles, and the big base structure. That's the silo closure door. That whole thing is just one single door. It weighs 760 tons, made of steel, filled with concrete, sits over the top, protects the missile from a nearby detonation. That door has to be able to lift up on railroad tracks and slide open in under 19 seconds, even if it's been already been covered in debris. Telephone pole with a crow's nest is about 50 feet tall. Double it, that's the size of the Titan II. Triple it, that's the depth of the silo. The nine megaton bomb that's sitting in our lobby, if that bomb was live and detonated 14,000 feet above this valley, it would wipe out everything in this valley. From that mountain eight miles away, to the mountains on the other side of Tucson, 30 miles away. And everything in between would be gone, wiped completely clean. Only thing left standing intact above ground, for as far as you can see, is going to be that door and the other 17 that used to be just like it that surrounded Tucson. We're going to head down the stairs now, so please watch your step. I need to get everybody off the stairs before we begin because they're so loud. So try to keep up the best you can. Right this way, folks. <laughs> This is where the hard part of the structure begins. It's four feet of concrete in the walls. Floors and ceilings are five feet thick. About 30 feet of the silo, eight feet thick of concrete just to hold the way to the master door. The entire, entire complex is covered in a quarter inch of balance and trade steel. It acts as a fabricated thing. All of our doors are one foot thick steel I beams. They're double welded together. Build the surface of the doors, the frames, there's near green seals. So when these doors are closed, and these doors are always closed, virtually anti anything on. Slow walk. It's more than three minutes to get to the next phone. No one's going to get in. Help will be on the way. Under three minutes, they'll buzz the door open. Our commander walks into that cage we were just in up there. It's called the entrapment area. The only camera on the property, he can't come to go to that point in the stay Designed to deflect an old bad blast away from us. The top floor is the crew's quarters. You military guys know it's not the Hilton up there, it's the military. The one bed, kitchenette, bathroom, incredibly basic. 
Downstairs. So in case of that shock wave, the ground around us and the shell of the building itself can all move up and down a foot and a half, a foot side to side. We should just hang here, safe in our little platoon. There's four crew members, two officers, two enlisted people. We're here for the next 24 hours. That's our shift. We call it an alert. It's our job while we're here to decode secret messages, monitor to maintain the missile in the complex, troubleshoot any problems that arise, keep this place in a state of readiness. That missile has to be ready to fire every second of every day. And when it reaches that point. Fire in, if the butterfly valve is open up, the two fuels mix, that thing is lit up out there. All your fire arms are going up, Captain. When the missile gets to 77% of its full thrust, the four explosive bolts that hold it down explode, and the Titan two starts lumbering up out of that silo. Two seconds later, lift off. It's gone, it's on its way. 58 seconds, folks, that's all it takes. Less than a minute to end the world. This is what made it so frightening to the Russians. They miss us by 100 miles or so. We give it 20 days to so let the radiation dissipate somewhat, and then we climb out into what? Whatever's left. We have no idea. There's nothing down here that tells us what happened up there. We don't even have a way to check the radiation. The missile is 103 feet tall, 10 feet in diameter, weighs 330,000 pounds, loaded with fuel. First stage engine has 430,000 pounds of thrust, which is equivalent to 2747 to full throttle. Y'all been to an airport, you know how loud that would be. Well, on that tube, it's going to create so much sound energy, it's going to break the missile into pieces. So we have to learn how to fly out of a silo. All the great panels are attenuator panels, full of spun fiberglass. We also have a 100,000 gallon tank of water attached to it. When the keys are turned, it dumps all the water into the engine. When the water meets the exhaust, it turns to steam. Energy it takes to create the steam, absorbs all the sound. Tell you two of the first rocket will be launching out of the silo. Anytime you see a rocket launch these days, like SpaceX, 90% of what you're looking at is just steam from the sound suppression system. 